and welcome back. The Point Community Development Corporation is dedicated to youth development and the cultural and economic revitalization in the Hunts Point section of our Bronx. The Point CDC is a multifaceted approach to asset-based community development. Its programming falls within three basic headings, all aimed at the compre comprehensive revitalization of the Hunts Point community. First, youth development. Second, arts and culture. And third, community development. And through justice-based arts service learning activities, the community-based program, and also supporting the academic, pre-professional, and positive social development of young people, they engage people as leaders in sustainable community development. Joining us now to share a little bit more about the work of the Point CDC is community organizer, Victor Davila, and we are glad to have Victor with us. Victor, good to have you. Good to have you. I, sorry, nice to be here. Hey, uh, it's all right, brother. It's all right. Listen, when we talk about the work of the Point CDC, I mean, um, it's a community development corporation, but there's also this social justice component. And uh, yeah. as we're the social justice show, talk to us a little bit about how that works between the Point social justice and uh, the work that's being done in the community. Well, I think that when you're talking about social justice in general, it's such a broad, massive uh, subject that is very, it's very hard to avoid it when you're doing work in general uh, that involves community, right? There are no forms of justice that do not include social justice in some capacity. And so when you're talking about food, when you're talking about infrastructure, when you're talking about uh, racial equality, economic equality, those are all brackets of social justice. So anytime you do anything from an organizational perspective, that affects people, you are potentially either working for or against social justice causes. Uh, the point has been in this field for the last 25 years of its existence. And it began as a way to help small uh, minority owned businesses get a startup. But then as community needs began to present themselves, it began to develop and change. And the nonprofits go shifted over those 25 years to be what it is today, which is this kind of um, massive gumbo pot of different uh, causes and issues because the, the, the issues we face, while they tend to have a very similar root cause, in order for you to dismantle them and replace them with something beneficial, you have to address it from a multidisciplinary stance. And so at the Point CDC, we do a lot of youth development training. We do a lot of after school program disciplines and, the, and behind the scenes, we do a lot of legislative work. Uh, we work with local officials. I had a meeting with Senator Biehi, uh two weeks ago, uh, trying to pass a uh, bill to help get the city on track when it comes to like its carbon neutrality. Like the, the we have big issues, uh, and I think 2020 isn't necessarily the the year is gone bad. It's that we play bad games and we are winning bad prizes, and so we have the we have a massive multilateral issue that requires massive multilateral solutions. And 2020 is those issues just rearing their heads, right? It's the payout for all these causes and all these yeah. decisions. Yeah. Well, talk to me about where you are today. I mean, obviously we're in the midst of election season. Uh, youth advocacy is big for you guys. Talk to me about the work that you're doing in regards to youth advocacy and even getting youth registered and out there to vote. So what we're doing right now is that we're trying to do a lot of infographics campaign. Uh, COVID has made it so that if being a nonprofit was difficult before COVID, right? <laughs> um, uh, writing for grants and things like that is essentially an unfortunate race of a bunch of people trying to do a really good thing, but only one of them gets to. And so in the age of COVID, it's about adaptation. And so what we've been switching to is opposed to having a more hands-on, get on the streets, hey, register to vote campaign, We've been doing infographic campaigns. So we're creating different infographics and is trying to spread them across as many social media platforms as possible to get out the word to vote. Uh, we have some people within our office who are helping with the census. Uh, we have a food drop off, uh, a, food, um, a food pantry at the Point CDC that gathers a lot of people. Whenever we can, we, put, uh, we give them pamphlets and flyers informing them about what's happening. Um, I personally run the program known as Action at the Point CDC, which is a youth activist program that takes kids in high school and we teach them uh, one on one community organizing skills and give them hand on experiences. Um, and while in that program, I have to constantly let them know what's up, right? Because the rules of engagement change like week to week. 
right? Half mm -hmm. my job is just watching the news and being able to make it so that it's digestible to youth because they need to know what's happening because then they can inform their families. Um, but I'm, I, we're looking, as most 501c3s that receive potential like federal funding, we cannot endorse any particular candidate, but we can endorse policies. And being a social justice platform, we want to make sure that we are pushing for and working with people who state, hey, these things that you value, these things that your community needs, we're going to vouch for this. And if you're not gonna vouch for these community values, then we have no reason to support any of your legislation, right, on an individual basis. And so uh, from a youth side, it's all about information, infographics, learning, and like making sure that we have classes that are teaching a comprehensive view of what uh, government functionality is. And then from the legislative side, when we're doing these background things, not in front of the youth, just like working with like city council members, things along those lines, what, what we're doing right now is really just trying to build alliances, right? When you're dealing with, uh, when you're dealing with administrative people who don't necessarily have your community's best interests at heart, you need to essentially treat it like war games. And you have to make sure that you are attacking at every possible front, right? You're creating infographics. You are getting kids out there to protest. You are involving yourself in protests. You're organizing protests, but you're also fighting legislatively, right? You're pushing for different legislation. You're creating campaigns by working with news networks to expose certain conversations that would not make someone look particularly good because they're not very good. But you're exposing information you are, you are voting, you are doing everything you can because the opposition has more money than you. And while you have the backing of truth and reality on your side, which is a very strong and powerful thing to have, you need to make sure that when you're going up against an opponent who has your worst interests at heart and a lot more resources than you, that you stretch them thin, right? Every avenue and opportunity that you can see to input yourself and take a stance against you must, whether that's private or public, you have to because it's how you make sure that they cannot function appropriately. It takes a lot of resources to keep people down, right? It takes a lot of money to keep people down. And that is ultimately the thing's ultimate weakness, right? It's a cliche thing to say like the bigger they are, the harder they fall, but that's exactly what the case is, right? We're dealing with top heavy enemies. You just gotta get them at the knees. And when we talk about our young people, let's go a little bit more in depth. When we look at Black Lives Matter, you look at a lot of the social justice causes that are out there right now, they're predominantly being led by young people who are at the forefront. So to get a young person involved, to get a young person engaged is very key and very critical. Yeah. I know that you spend a lot of time connecting with them. I know you spend a lot of time really dealing with them in terms of bringing them up to speed with the issues. Talk to me a little bit more about the youth receptiv uh, rest receptivity in terms of these issues, because uh, you'll have an argument by some people like, oh, youth are not engaged, they're not politically and socially woke or conscious, but the truth is that is far from the truth. Yeah, I, I think the only time youth are not engaged in politics is when you don't allow them to be, right? Uh, they, there's no demographic that wants to prove their independence and their capacity more than young people because they are so used to being ignored. Like I'm, I'm work, I work with teens on a regular basis and every new batch of teens I get, I'm kind of blown away, but like, damn, I was not nearly this functional <laughs> at this age. Um, and you guys are coming here with the best of intentions. It's, it's a thing where um, I, don't, uh, I, don't I don't frequently uh, uh, quote European kings, but Napoleon Bonaparte once said that if you wanna know who a, man, who a person is, look at who they were when they were 20, right? Right now, we are dealing with one of the most climatic moments in recent generations, right? The United States has not seen this precarious of a moment since what was probably leading up to, World, to the first civil war, right? It's a thing where if we do not have all hands on deck, we are not gonna be able to make the appropriate changes to survive into the future. And the youth are not unaware of that, right? They feel those impacts first. They feel those impacts and they are, have elastic enough minds to know how to respond to those impacts, right? 
COVID has shifted the needle by a lot uh, because it's it was almost kind of the last straw that broke the camel's back. It's, it's a thing that we are all experiencing. It is a reality that we all have to live in. And that connectivity helps connect to other things, right? Like COVID would not be as big of a problem if the CDC had been gutted before. And if certain top scientists had been listened to. And that's also being exacerbated by climate change because the warmer it is outside, the the long the longer a lifespan you have for like people traveling. And people traveling means that disease spreads. Like these are all interconnected issues. And youth are the exact kind of demographic that have the mindset to connect those things. Right? Older generations, and I'm I will I'll, I'll include myself in that, although I so I'm sure that people would disagree in some capacity. Um, it's a bit more rigid. Right? It's not to say that it doesn't mean that people who are not the youth can't understand and connect to issues and understand the, the gravity of them in an accurate way. But it's to say it requires a lot more work, right? Because we're a little more set in our ways. We have to actually get over ourselves before we can take action. Whereas the young person, they are still learning who, them, who they are. And a part of who they are right now is this climate. And they are ready to respond to that climate. Like it's, it's very easy to get youth engaged because they are fully aware of the stakes, right? Their future is at risk, right? My, my, the future I would have had is already happening, right? Like the, the older and older you get, the less stake you have in the now, right? There are individuals within our political system who definitely could not give less of a damn simply because they're not going to be around to have to reap those negative returns. And that's, that's why throughout history, change has been built off the backs of youth. And it's really annoying when I hear people talk about how youth are not engaged or how youth are not involved or how youth don't care. If you don't think youth don't care, it's because you're not creating spaces that allow them to care the way they can. Yeah. Well, let me, let me bring this point about getting connected, right? If, a, if you got a young person out there that wants to be connected, or maybe a parent that says, listen, this is a great opportunity for uh, my young person to become engaged in a positive activity. Point CDC, of course, a great place for uh, learning and growing and also having recreational activity. Uh, talk to us about how they can get connected, especially amidst COVID-19. Yeah. So we've actually started to do a online virtual uh, programs right now. So the Point CDC has a lot of, I've been talking a lot about like its legislative side and activism side, but you have to make sure that your home front's protected, right? And part of by doing that is that the reason you fight, the reason you do all this activist work is because there's something to protect. Like arts and culture is what you're fighting for. And so we want to provide spaces for art and culture. So at the Point CDC, if you go to our website at thepointcdc.org, um, you can sign up for different online classes. We have virtual art classes for visual arts where you can like, for a very small fee, just get a package of art supplies delivered to you uh, so that your kid can start learning at home, at the school, right? We have circus programs for kids at the Point CDC, photography programs for kids at the Point CDC, music programs uh, taught by a award-winning opera singer at the Point CDC, right? These are all things that we are trying to make as affordable as possible uh, because we want to make sure that this moment isn't disrupting development, right? This is an important time to make sure your kids are still engaging with other people, right? Social learning is important, right? It's how we learn to care about each other and how we learn to relate to each other. And so even if it's online, it's an important thing to make sure your kids are in a space where they are gaining something out of this moment as opposed to losing opportunities, right? We want to make sure that kids leave COVID, this entire timeline, with more skills than they came into it. And the classes we offer are there to help uh, encourage that. Victor Davila, before we go, uh, please let people know again uh, the way they can get in touch with you and also the Point CDC. Yeah, so the Point CDC has a website. It's the pointcdc.org. Uh, it's a fairly well-designed website. There's lots of tabs. You just have to go to whichever after-school program you want and you're interested in and sign up and register. Real simple like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Victor, thank you so much for being with us here on the Social Justice Forum. I think you definitely provided some insight into awareness, and uh, thank you for the work that you're doing with our young people. Thank you for having me. It was very nice. All righty. 
Victor Davila, our guest here on uh, the Social Justice Forum. Please stay with us. We do have more show. We'll be right back. Coming up right after this.